Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about data types. We're going to talk about creating tables. We're also going to talk about altering and deleting tables. So in the last tutorial, we set everything up. So we got MySQL set up. We also downloaded this program, PopSQL, which is basically just a text editor that we can use to write all of our SQL code and all that stuff in. So what I want to do in this tutorial is show you guys how to create tables, right? So we created a database. In our case, we created a database named draft in the last tutorial. And now what I want to do is start populating that database with different tables. In other words, I want to start defining our database schema. Now, whenever you're working with relational database management systems, your first step is always to create tables. So before we can start inserting any information, before we can start uh, querying for information, we actually have to create the physical tables inside of our database. And we can do that by defining the tables layouts. And so what we want to do is we basically want to use a SQL command, which is called create table. And then inside of that command, we can pass in all the different attributes or all the different columns that we want our table to have. And so the first thing I want to show you guys is the different types of data that we can store inside of our database. So over here, I actually just have a little list and I'm just going to paste it in here. So these are all of the basic data types that we're going to be using in SQL. Now, these aren't all of the data types. There are actually tons of data types and depending on the relational database management system that you're using, a lot of them have like different data types to do different things. I would say that these six data types right here make up like the core SQL data types. Like these are probably the most common data types that you're going to see, but just keep in mind that there are a few others. Now we're using the MySQL database and all of these data types are going to be able to be used in the MySQL database management system. And all of these are going to be used for the most part in any relational database management system. But like I said, specific database management systems will uh, allow you to use different data types depending on how they want to implement things. So let's go through these different data types and I'll kind of talk you guys through how to use them. So int, this is actually going to refer to an integer. So anytime you see int, just like that int, that basically means any whole number, right? So this is any sort of whole number, uh, but it can't have decimal places after it. If you want to be able to store decimals, you can use this decimal data type and the decimal data type will allow you to store decimals. And you'll see we have this parentheses here after decimal and I have M and N in here. Now these are actually both going to end up being numbers. So M is going to be the total number of digits that you want to store for this number. And N is going to be the number of digits that you want to store after the decimal point. So when we're working with databases, you have to be very specific about the different information and specifically the amount of digits that you want to store for a number. So what we could do is I could say like 10 here and I could put a four over here. And what this means is we want to store a decimal number with 10 total digits and four of those digits coming after the decimal place. So you can specify, uh, you know, depending on how accurate you want these uh, numbers to be stored, you can modify those numbers. Down here we have var char, and this actually stands for variable char or variable character. This is basically a way that we can store a string of text. So var char, we have these parentheses after here, and you can put a number in here. So if, if I put a one in here, then this is going to store a string of text length one. If I put 100 in here, this is going to store a string of text uh, with 100 characters. So that means that the mo the maximum amount of characters that you could store inside of a var char 100 would be 100. And down here we have blob, which stands for binary large object. And this is basically just a structure that can store large amounts of binary data. So if you have a lot of people will use these for like images or files, like you could store those inside of a blob and they'll be able to be stored in the database. We also have date. So date will be like a specific date and time. And you can see we would format a date like YYYY hyphen MM hyphen DD. So this would be the year, two digit month, and then the two digit day. You can also have a timestamp, which is uh, similar to date, but it's generally used for recording like when things happen. So you could record like when an item got inserted into the database or something like that. So over here, it's just YYYY hyphen MM hyphen DD. And then we have the hours, minutes and the seconds. So those are all, like I said, the main data types that you're going to be using, but these aren't all the data types. So depending on the database management system that you're using, you want to check to see what specific data types 
uh, they offer. But like I said, for the most part, these should work in just about any system. So now I wanna talk to you guys about creating database tables. So what we can actually do is we can create tables and we're gonna to have to use those data types to tell the relational database management system what types of data we wanna store in each column in the table. So in order to create a table, we're actually gonna type out some SQL. Now I'm just gonna type out create table. And these are two SQL reserved words, create and table. And you'll notice that I typed them in all capital letters. Now this is actually a pretty common convention when writing SQL queries. A lot of people will write these reserved words in SQL in all capitals, but you don't have to. If I wanted, I could write create table just like that and you'll see it's getting highlighted the same way. The reason that people write these in all caps is because then it's easy to distinguish the SQL from any other text that we might be writing. So I would say for the most part, uh, just stick with making these all uppercase and you should be fine. So I'm gonna say create table and then I wanna type in the name of the table that I wanna create. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create a database table. So I actually have a database table uh, set up over here, you'll see it's a student table and it's storing uh, just a list of students, like maybe in a college or university. So there's three things that we're storing about this student, the student's ID, the student's name, and the student's major. So we're storing all of this information about this student. So what I can do now is I can actually create this exact table inside of my database. So I can say create table, we'll call it student, and you'll notice that I made this lowercase. So this isn't an SQL reserved word, so I'm not going to make it uppercase. And then what I can do is I can just make an open and close parentheses and a semicolon. Now, any command that you write in SQL is always gonna end with a semicolon. And if you're just starting out, you might forget to put that semicolon in there, but you wanna make sure that you always put it in there, otherwise it's not valid SQL. So I'm just gonna click enter, and then I'm gonna go down here in between these parentheses. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start defining the different columns or the different attributes on this table. So what we can do is we can define a column name and then a column data type. So I could come over here and I could say uh, the first attribute. So in my case, the first attribute for this table is gonna be student ID. And you'll also notice that student ID is a primary key. So on this table, student ID is the primary key, meaning it's the uh, column on the table which will uniquely identify the specific row. So I'm just gonna call this student underscore ID. And now I need to give this a data type. So I'm gonna give this a data type of int because all of these IDs, as you can see, are integers, right? They're just integer numbers. Now, because this is going to be the primary key for this table, I need to denote that. So over here, I can just say primary key, just like that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna tell MySQL that this is gonna be the primary key for the table. Next thing we wanna store is the student's name. So I'm just gonna say name, and the name is actually gonna be a string. So this could be like Jack or Tommy or Kara, right? It's a name that we're storing about this table. So over here, I'm gonna make this a varchar, and then I'm gonna make an open and close parentheses. Now remember, with the varchar data type, we have to tell uh, MySQL how many characters we want this to be able to store. So with someone's name, what you wanna do is you basically just wanna think like, how many characters do we really wanna to allocate to storing someone's name? Because here's the thing, if I allocated like a thousand characters for someone's name, well, in reality, normal people don't have a name with a thousand characters, right? I mean, maybe your name would be 20 characters or 30 if you're really pushing it, but a thousand is just totally out of the bounds of reality. And you have to think, if you're storing like millions of names potentially, you know, allocating a thousand characters to each name when you only need 20 is gonna take up a lot of extra space in your database. So I think what we should do is maybe say like 20. So let's say that the maximum length of someone's name we wanna store is going to be 20 characters. And really, you know, depending on the domain of the application that you're building, that's gonna be different. But in my case, let's just say it's 20. And then finally, we wanted to store the student's major. So I can say over here, major, and this is also gonna be a ver char. So why don't we also allocate 20 characters to their major, and that should be enough. So you'll notice that I'm defining each of the attributes, each of the columns on the table, and then I'm putting a comma, and then I'm defining the next column, and then I'm putting a comma, and then the final column. So this right here, this create table statement, 
is basically going to create this table over here for us, right? We have a primary key, which is an int, and we have a name and a major, which are strings. So that's gonna go ahead and do that for us. Now, from inside Pop SQL, what's really cool is we can just click on this query right here, click on this SQL statement, and I can come over here and click Run. And what this will do is it'll automatically run this SQL on our MySQL database server. So I'm gonna click Run, and you'll see over here, we get a success message that says rows affected zero. So that actually was able to create that new table in our database. So that is basically how we could create a table. And now we have this table stored in our database. I wanna show you guys another thing we can do. So over here, I'm defining the primary key. So student ID was the primary key, right? It's the one column that's gonna uniquely identify each row. And if you want, you can put primary key over here after like student ID, or what you can do is you could get rid of this and you could define this down below. So instead of defining the primary key up here next to student ID, I could come down here and I could change it. So I could say now primary key, and then I can make an open and closed parentheses. And in here, I could put the name of the column that I want to be the primary key. So in my case, I'll just say student ID. So now what this is saying is that this primary key is going to be student ID. So this is equivalent to what I was doing up here. It's just another way that you can do it. And so now we already have our table created, so I'm not gonna go ahead and create it again. All right, so now that we have our student table created, let's go ahead and make sure that it got created correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna type out another MySQL command. So I'm just gonna type out describe, and then I'm gonna type in the name of the table. So in our case, it's gonna be student. And you'll notice with um, pop SQL, if I click over here on this query, it gets highlighted in that blue color. And if I click down here on this query, it gets highlighted. So what you can do with pop SQL is you can have like a query up here and you could run that query or you could click on this query down here and run it. So I'm gonna click on describe student and then I'm gonna click run. So you'll see that it's actually describing the table that we just created. So there's a list of all these different fields. We have student ID, name and major. It's telling us the data types that we're storing. So like Verchar, uh, 20 and then it's telling us a bunch of other information which we're going to get into later So what this did is it basically described everything about this table So now what I want to show you guys how to do is delete and modify a table So now that we've created a table and we saw that it got created correctly If you wanted you could delete the table So what I could do is I could come down here and type out drop Table and I can just type the name of the table So in our case, it's the student table and a semicolon and now I'm going to click on here and I'll click run and what this is gonna do is it's going to drop that table. So now if I came up here and I clicked on describe student, in other words, I'm saying that I wanna execute this command and I clicked run, you'll see that it says no such table, right? Table draft.student doesn't exist because remember we just dropped it. So what we can do is we could actually create it again. So I'm gonna click on this create table query and I'll click run and that'll go ahead and create it. So now if we click describe student, you'll see we get the table back because we created it again. So you can drop the table. You could also modify the table. So let's say that after the table was created, you wanted to give it another column. What I could do is I could add another column. So I could say alter table and then say student because that's the name of the table. And then I can say add. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna add an extra column onto the table. So why don't we add a column for GPA? So we could store a student's GPA and that's gonna be a decimal. So I'm just gonna click a semicolon and this is gonna go ahead and end off this command. Now with decimal, remember I showed you that you could put numbers after here, like one and two. So what we're gonna do is generally a GPA would be like uh, three point something something or four point something something. So we're gonna have this be three total digits with two of the digits occurring after the decimal point. So now I can go ahead and run this command and you'll see it says success down here. So if we were to describe the student table again, if I just click on this and click run, now you'll see we have that extra column in here, GPA, and it's a decimal three, two. So that is how we can drop a table and that's also how we can alter a specific column. If you wanted, you could also drop a specific column. So I could say alter table student and over here, I can just say drop column and just type in the name of the column. So what this will do is it'll drop that GPA column from the table. So let's go ahead and run. We get the success message. Now, if I describe the table and I click run, you'll see that 
the GPA field went away. So I actually dropped that field. So you can create tables, we can add columns onto tables, we can uh, remove columns from tables, and then we can just remove the table altogether. So hopefully that shows you guys uh, some of the basics of doing those operations on tables. Now, obviously, whenever you're creating your database, the first thing that you wanna do is define your database schema. In other words, you wanna create all the different tables and then you can start inserting data into the tables as such. So in the next tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about inserting data into tables. So we'll actually insert some student information into our student table. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.